Welcome to another edition of Sanford Says. My name is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. And today we have two great guests. We have a wonderful topic, the Downtown Sanford Marina Master Plan. Rosemary Aldridge is the Prime Consultant. She is our Senior Vice President with Neil Schaefer. Welcome, Rosemary. Thank you. And Eric Schultz is with us. He is the Project Engineer of Edgewater Resources, the sub-consultant on this project. Welcome, both of you. We're so excited about this great project. I mean, the Sanford Marina, you, you can't miss it. <laughs> it's, our, it's, it's our ideal location right on Lake Monroe. Right, Rosemary? There's Rosemary. never a bad day at the marina. <laughs> it's <laughs> there so isn't. beautiful. So can you tell us really um, what the situation is and just a little history about the Sanford Marina and then um, the master plan and what's really, uh, what can we expect as new marina features? Sure. So the, the marina was mainly constructed in the 1970s and at that time, the city got into a lease with a, a marina company um, that was actually running the marina since that time. But the lease was set up where after 55 years, the city had an option to renew it. And that came time in 2022, just a few months ago. And so they, the city wanted to, to know before this came about in the end of 2021, they asked our firm to work with Edgewater Resources and you know put together a condition assessment of the marina just to see what the issues were so they could decide if they wanted to stay in the lease or um, move in a different, different direction. And after the condition assessment, they decided they really just wanted to, the city wants to take more control. And this is, like you said, it's a jewel in you know the city's um, area in the city limits and you know we need to make the most of it so they saw this as a great opportunity to take control of it and so they put out an RFP for um, a marina operator which is a request for proposal a request so in case for proposal yes. that's right to find a new marina operator and they set this up under a different situation where um, instead of the, the company that was managing the marina having complete control, the city now has control. And that, but that also means that the city has to put in all the money to improve or repair, but they hired uh, Founders 3, F3 Marina, which is a great company. They've been out there for a few months now, I think since about April, they mm -hmm. really came on board. And uh, so they're helping, they're, it's great that they were involved from the beginning of this master planning effort because now that the city's in charge, they want to know how can we make the most of the marina. Yeah. No. So was that all coordinated to happen at the same time, or just was like by a miracle? Of it course, was it was coordinated <laughs> to happen at the same time, Lisa. <laughs> okay. What do you think we're amateurs? I just want to <laughs> know this. The city did a great thing by doing that okay. because literally we kicked this project off in the end of March, and you know by mid-April we had the public meeting to from the front end get all the input from the public and what does the public want? Cause you know, it's for everyone. Right. And the, you know, big, big point was it's not just for the, the boaters, it's for anybody that wants to go out and enjoy a sunset or a sunrise. So that's why we got the public involved. But F3 was there from that beginning point. So it was great cause they weren't gonna come in at the end and go, wait a minute, right. why didn't you do it like this? Yeah, so it's great that everybody's on the same page, exactly. you know, and um, I know that they even have, while you're listening to this, you might want to go to their website. It's the downtown, what's the name of the website? DowntownSanfordMarina.com. Yeah, check out their website because they've created, I mean, we've got a new, a brand for them and it's really great. It's on our city website as well and it's, it's all kind of the same as the city of Sanford's uh, logo, so it's very familiar. It's got the same theme and we are, uh, same marketing. And uh, they did a great job on the website. And so while you're listening, you could look, go to their, their um, web page and check it out because, again, it's all part of the same big picture of this Marina Master Plan. Yeah, and, you know, the great thing about doing planning is hopefully things happen by design. And changing the name to the Downtown Sanford Marina was discussed, like, in the very first meeting. And everybody got on board that, you know, we wanted to brand that it's in downtown. So when people are looking up marinas to go visit when they're boating on St. John's River, they go, oh, that one's in a downtown. There must be things to do there. Yeah. And what was great is that F3 and the city have, as these things came up, they immediately made that change. They didn't wait a year, you know. Yeah. Immediately. That's already happened. So now the marina's been branded, the website. 
and there's new signage out there. Yeah, too. and that's really important. And so what, what are some of the potentially new marina features? Now, did this come up with the input from the public? Did you get these ideas from sure. that? Okay, yes. yeah, I would think so, yeah. Yes, so um, just to go back for a minute, the, the beginning of the project we had um, 10 stakeholder meetings. We met with about 20 different stakeholders. So these were companies that were already, you know, on Marina Isle. And let me say too, we weren't just looking at the Marina, we looked at Marina Isle. And when we say Marina Isle, we mean the part that's under the city's control because some of it is already leased out. Right. So we were only looking at what's not already leased out uh, for other uses. But in those stakeholder meetings, you know, we invited the businesses that are out there, um, the city organizations like Main Street, the Chamber. Um, we even brought in a, a company that has seaplanes in Tavares who was interested in, you know, bringing seaplanes. So yeah. we looked at new things. We looked at what are the, you know, the current people want. Yeah. And then brought in all the, the boat owners, the, the powerboat owners, the sailboat owners, and then had a big public meeting, the charrette style meeting where you know people come in and can give comments and so Lisa back to your question that's where we had options like what would you like this versus that you know would you like more pavilion picnic tables um, or would you like a, a bigger <laughs> bigger boat storage you know what what do they like and that that's where we got a lot of input yeah and so that seems really great because really when you're working in in the local government arena it's where the rubber meets the road. You're, it's closest to the people, and these public meetings are so important because they do take your comments and questions and concerns into consideration because it's your Sanford Marina, downtown Sanford Marina, right? Right, and right. So. And yeah, let me mention how you know that that is also reflected in the way our team is set up. So Neil Schaefer is a local firm, and you know some of our staff have lived in Sanford for 25 years. I've lived here 10 years. You know, we kind of understand the, the local culture and what people want, you know, from right. being around. Edgewater is an expert in marinas, I mean, all over the world. So, you know, they kind of, they're kind of focused on how can we best serve the boaters and, you know, what makes it a better operating marina. Neil Schaefer's more focused on the, what we call the upland side, which is the, the land, you know. The what side? The up upland. Upland. Yeah. Okay. So right. what's out of the water? You I know? see. So you know, can, can we bring in more restaurants? Can we have more shoreline devoted to the public and not just boaters? And so that's where we've been balancing, you know, that with what people from the public and the boat, you know, operator yeah. owner side wants to see. I mean, this is just amazing because even, and I want to just, I want to focus on the logo, but I have to tell you, if you look at the city of Sanford's logo, there's a slight wave there because <laughs> That is what we're all, I mean, not what we're all about, but when you, when you come to Sanford, like any other, unlike any other city, we are on beautiful Lake Monroe. I mean, there's just so, something exactly. in, just magical about it. And so it's incorporated into our, our branding and just our being here in the city, you right. know, is, is the marina. And, and oh, how yeah. many cities can say, well, you know, we have a, a marina like this that's on the St. John's River, plus all the other amenities we have here in the no, city. Airport, train, so I'm unique. gonna let you talk. No, you're right, it's, it's extremely I'm, unique. And I, that had a lot to do with the, you know, the timing of doing this really couldn't have been more perfect because of all of the development that's come to the area and is continuing to come to the area, it's time to do the marina. When you yeah. start looking at the river walk and you know looking at the new development, you're like, wow, we need to we need to jazz up the marina. Yeah. So that the city's prepared to do that. You know, we presented to the commission the initial um, findings from the public involvement and then how we incorporated that into some new marina features. Would you like me to tell you more? Yes. <laughs> I'm going like you to tell you more, and I'm going to just double check on our friend Eric here to see if he's um, available. But please, uh, let's okay. hear it. We've got to hear about these new, new, new okay. uh, potential marina features. Excellent. So, um, in keeping with the the new branding, the downtown Sanford Marino, you know, we we will see much more advertising and you know what we call wayfinding. How did we get there? Showing that it is there, not only from the streets but from the water and getting it out on you know marine navigation websites and things like oh, that. Oh, that's so, so yeah. cool. So looking at it from both ways. But <clears throat> interestingly, when we did the, the public comment, 
um, we put out a survey on Survey Monkey, which you helped us to distribute. Yeah, we have Eric back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah it's a, so. so the Survey Monkey was a great survey tool to get people involved. Again, it's um, just key to a successful project, yeah. I would think. Well, we had over 200, I think 217 people and from the public took that survey, and then we also had a separate boater survey that was very detailed in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, what a boater is looking for, yeah. and the size of a slip, and what amenities. So it was, you know, much, much more tailored to the boaters. About 20 boaters took that survey. But the biggest, number one, um, I guess, a area of interest for improvements was public restrooms. Okay. <laughs> so well, we're all human. Yes. Okay. So public <laughs> restrooms. Yep. Yeah. And that was both on the marina side and on the public side. So meanwhile, like I said, the city's just been so proactive on all of this. The city's already building those new public restrooms. Yeah, you know? see, that's wonderful. And and it's not something that has to wait for this whole master plan to be completed. It's something that needed to get done, and it's being done. And if you go out there to the marina today, uh, you will see flags, and you will see construction going on. That's wonderful. So now, that, that was the number one thing. Yeah, and, and so I just want to for those who may not understand, let's get down to like the really the nitty gritty. A master plan. What? In, in, can you just explain what a master plan pro piece of doc or document is, and sure. and for people who may not know? Sure. So, um, you know, a, a master plan, and, and I'll let Eric talk about this with okay. Marinas too, because he does a ton of them. But just in general, you know, what we were working with 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 what is what is there, and what's the highest and best use of the land that you have. So that, you know, and so that as you're building out these vacant spaces or, you know, renovating what's there, you have a guide, guidance system, you know, that this is something that the city will adopt. And so as new developments want to come on Marina Isle, it, we need to look at is that in keeping with how we plan to use this land? I see. Right. Okay. And, and it takes in a lot of public comment. You know, it's not like a design document but it, it can show like architectural standards. What do you want it to look like? The signage, um, you know, what do you want the signs to look like? The logos, right. the buildings, you know, those are the kind of things you can set in a master plan. And how long is a master, typically how long do they, they last before they need to be actually acted upon? In other words, or is that just really up to Money. the elected? <laughs> Money. Money. Money, okay. Yeah, I see. we can talk about that, but Eric, Eric, do you want to add something about marina master planning? Sure. So, you know, master plan can kind of be many different things, but specifically when we're looking at the marina, uh, the master plan is sort of the long-term vision of how we see this site. So, um, for example, we were out there and different docks have different current conditions. Some are in worse shape than others. And so if you're going to be replacing the whole system, not all of it needs to be replaced at the same time, but that you come up with a master plan. So the long-term vision, here's what a new marina would look like. So it was important to, um, you know, Schaefer and Edgewater when we were coming up with this is we wanted something that is going to fit the neat current needs of that marina basin with, you know, these are things like slip sizes, slip layout, what boats are there right now what boats do we want to have there in the future and take all that into account and come up with a future plan that both can meet the needs that they have right now and then also not prevent us from wishing we had done something different in the future so yeah um, something that specifically like the dry stack for example so that we consider that part of the marina because you store boats there and you know right now that dry stack has a tough time getting larger boats. The trends we see in the boating market are, you know, boats are slowly getting bigger and bigger. So as that dry stack building is right now, you know, I, I don't think it, it's just not going to be able to accommodate the future boats. And the, uh, you know, we've got to look 20, 30, 40, 50 years in advance. So how can we come up with a new building that is going to satisfy what those voters need now, but also not hinder us, you know, when we look at this project in 50 years. So those you, are kind of the things that, from the, the marina perspective, we were looking at with the master plan. Yeah, now, can I ask the question about the depth of the water in the marina? Does that have anything to do with the size of boats that you can, that can dock there? 
Yeah, that it really uh, it does affect it, um, especially when we're talking about sailboats and things like that. Um, because you know, sailboats have keels; they have different demands. Um, the term we'll use is like draft, how how deep that boat is uh, in the water. So, if we have a, a shallow basin, we're only we're going to be limiting ourselves to some pretty small boats. And so that that is something, even though you might not physically see it. That is actually something we took consideration with when we came up with the master plan. Where do we want the sailboats? Where do we want to put the power boats that might not need as much water depth? Uh, those are all things that we were thinking of. Interesting. And so what is the water depth, do you know, of our marina, Eric? Yeah, so um, if I'm remembering off the top of my head, I think it was uh, seven, it, it was like five to seven feet in areas. Um, that was in the west basin there's some we actually went out there and did a bathymetric survey so we went out there in a boat and shot depths on everything and you know with tide there's some water level not necessarily tide but the water level does fluctuate a little bit when you get rains and things like that um, but when we were out there we saw like four five six seven all the way up to nine in some areas but uh yeah there were a couple high spots but those were mainly the, the depths that we were seeing yeah and is that typical for like a river marina like we are i don't know i'm just curious because just you know since you're here it might as well. yeah so uh, typically we would like to see depths uh when the water's at its lowest to be pretty much six feet everywhere that can accommodate uh a wide range of boats and things like that uh, as we're looking now to the future of the project, I think we're, we do have some dredging in there um, because if you have six feet, that might be good. But as you know, water is moving. Uh, who knows what the water elevation is going to be? Mm -hmm. And um, sand is also moving in that basin all the time. So right. you ideally want to dredge it or have that um, the shallowest be around like seven or eight. And then over time, when sand kind of fills in that marina, then you're at around like six or something, which we would consider sort of, that's the target. Ideal, yeah. Well, that's interesting. So, um, Rosemary, what are we looking at in terms of your project goals? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think one of the biggest goals was to look at, like I said, the land that's there and the land that's available, the shoreline, and figure out what's the highest and best use of that land and to balance, you know, having something there for people that don't own boats and, you know, making sure it's a highly functional marina and it's, you know, desirable and will attract people to come, you know, just for an overnight visit or a day visit and then making sure, you know, we got public input. Um, and I would say another thing as part of the master plan was looking at, you know, after doing the, the plan and as we're doing it, we've done cost estimates to see what this will cost so that the city can program and figure out how to fund it. But also we're looking at grants and, you know, there are some opportunities for grants that might help to fund it. Okay. All right. And some of your key findings, want to discuss that? Yeah. So um, as far as, you know, we, we talked about the, sur the surveys, besides the, the public restrooms, which are definitely not the most exciting part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> of what's coming but much uh, necessary yeah interestingly the the public was most interested in more restaurants picnic areas um, having better access from the river walk you know maybe making it feel like the river walk continues actually out onto marina isle and so making that connection was important um, right yeah and and um yeah, because I could see, and excuse me, but I could see how the city has invested in the Riverwalk, and now you're invested in investing in the streetscapes in downtown, and now you're investing in the marina, and it, we're a walkable city. And so to connect all of those dots, to me, would be, of course, is like ideal. Yes, with yes. And, and, you know, so not only connecting where you walk out there, but maybe you can actually dip your toe in the water. Maybe right. not swim, but, right. <laughs> you know, access to the water. Well, you know, and the city's had those public day slips for quite some time now, and we've really promoted to the fact where you can just oh, yeah. drive your boat up. I think there's six of them out there, and they're right at Veterans Memorial Park. And get out, walk into downtown, take your dog in your boat, walk into downtown, enjoy downtown. 
and stay for as long as you like and get back in your walk to the marina get in the in the free day slips and go on your way and and to me that's such a, a great day you know yes. you, and you don't have to be a, a city on an ocean or you know a, but you're we're right here on Lake Lake Monroe and, and you don't have to find a parking space <gasps> that's right <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes, there's free, and they're free. Free yeah, day sunrise are. to sunset, I believe they're open. But this is, I, those those day slips are incorporated into this master plan and what's going to come yes. with them. Yes, you yeah. know, obviously they're in very good condition. They're very new. But I think marketing them, as we attract more people to want to come to the marina, those will be utilized more. Um, but, you know, the other finding from the boaters, um, they, they are concerned about parking, but things like security, you know, a lot of them are live aboards and they, they are concerned about security. So those mm -hmm. are things we can address. Right. But they also want things like, you know, meeting spaces. And those could be things that anybody could, you know, rent out the yeah. meeting room for a, a meeting or an event. So um, those are areas that we are addressing. Yeah. And not to mention when you walk by on a very windy day, a cr the marina on the river walk, and you hear those sailboat now, Eric, what are those called? You know, sailboats. When the clanking of the the masts, I guess. I do you know what I'm referring to, Eric? Yeah, all the, all the lines on the on the mast. Yeah, um, I mean, and all yes. like the riggings and things like yeah. that. Yeah, music, right? And that sound with the with the with the view of the sailboats is just oh, yeah. with the if moonlight and just everything. It's it's just so awe inspiring, and for me yes. at least. Um, but so that's what makes. Sanford's so special as you have yeah. a little bit of everything and our marina is truly a jewel like you said so is there any other things that we want to talk about at the um at the at the end of this podcast we're coming to a close um, yeah yeah I can just mention a few of the features because we start talking about yeah. them we hadn't gotten through them all so it's yeah, not just okay. restrooms but um so, so some of the things um we mentioned the seaplane docks, which, you know, we do have interests where the people in Deveries want to be able to fly and not just land in their own lake. They want to go somewhere yeah. and be able to land. So we're planning um, some docks for seaplanes. One really exciting thing I think everybody will be happy about is, is we'll have a fishing pier. Okay, so there's already a, a breakwater wall on the east side of the marina that's just there, you know, for wave attenuation. But... It, it will be expanded where you you know you should be able to walk out on it and or be out there fishing so that'll be a, a big change to be able to yeah. get out you know on the water and fish which so where will that be now if you know where we're talking about um marina isle and kind veterans of, memorial park so east yeah kind of, of that. where sanford avenue comes out okay on seminole boulevard right out from that right I across see. from the civic center okay. is that wall that okay. we're talking about building you know basically a appear on um, and then of course the, you know the docks will be much improved and the the facilities like the utilities and pump outs and all of that will be new but uh, there will be opportunities like the building that's there now that houses the the restrooms um, that building will be reconstructed where it'll have a cafe that overlooks the marina and you know you can go in there if you're waiting for the river ship or yeah. um, just go in there to have a, a drink or a coffee so more restaurants was a big goal and um, Eric talked about the dry dock storage building which is just that huge concrete yeah. looking building out there that that building you know the goal would be to replace it with a bigger you know more modern facility to accommodate bigger boats but also you see in a lot of the marinas around where around the base of it they'll build, you know, shops and retail and restaurants. So that's a place where we have, you know, tucked okay. in more more opportunities. And then the river walk, you know, we have a trail, a ten foot trail that connects to the river walk, goes all the way around, you know, yeah. the eastern portion, which is not under lease. Yeah. And then there's an event lawn that will be in the northeast corner where the picnic pavilions are. We have that um plan for what we call a, a palm garden event lawn oh, nice. and yeah so it will it will be a you know expanded version of what's there now a grass a palm garden and then we're you know looking at trying to incorporate maybe a little bit of beachfront that will not be you know the seawall that's there some people are concerned about you know children being out there 
because you fall off the seawall. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not too easy to get back no. up. But if there was an area, you know, there is a little bit of area left along there that doesn't have a seawall, that maybe that could be more like, quote, unquote, beach where you gotcha. could, you know, walk out and touch the water. Okay. So those are some of the key things. Okay. All right. Well, that's w wonderful features, potential features. And um, so... Is there any, Eric, do you um, have any last words that you may want to say? We can talk forever. It's, we're we're uh, so much going on with this marina. Oh, yeah. Don't even get me started. I could <laughs> go on this for hours. But uh, I just want to really thank uh, Neil Schaefer and the city of Sanford for bringing us on board. Uh, when we first came out and I saw that marina, it was I couldn't believe how amazing of a sight it was. Rarely do you have a peninsula with a guarded basin. And a beautiful lake like that it was really um you know it, it it just is such a great place for a marina and so you know i think with this master plan and uh, moving forward i think this is really going to be a jewel for the city of sanford it's just it's you know i really appreciate being able to work on this with everybody all right well Same thank here. you for your expertise and Rosemary, do you have any last words? I know you work here, live here, and I know that you probably have a special place in your heart to want to see this yeah, happen. I think just to set the expectation of the time frame, yeah. you know, that so there are some docks that need immediate replacement. Immediate, we're defining within a year. So right now our goal is to get this in front of the commission for adoption in the first meeting in October, and then we're going to apply for permitting for these docks to be replaced, okay. you know, pretty quickly, as fast as can be done, yeah. which is at least a year, you know, to get through permitting, design, and construction. Um, but once we replace the docks most in need, which are on the west side, you know, we'll start looking at the east side. But the that's the marine itself. These things that will be planned for the, you know, the upland part, we call, um, that's more like park like features right. those can be done over time whenever the city has funds and wants to start them so right. they don't have to wait but you know for the fully new and modern marina including the dry storage building which probably not that many people care about <laughs> right. um, ma that may take 10 years yeah but hopefully the other things will be over five years you know they'll see a lot of improvements and and if you go out there now, you'll already see them because F3 is making them every day. They have a great team out there. All right. Well, so see, that gives our listeners some perspective as to all when is this timeline and when, when you could see things in completion. But thank you for that. That's so important. We have the great idea, the plan, and now the timeline. And so and it is on the, your website. Yes, too. it is on the City of Sanford website at sanfordfl.gov, right on our homepage, uh, Downtown Sanford Marina Master Plan. Check out their web page also. What's their website again? It's Res downtownsanfordmarina.com. Yeah, check out their website and also, like I said, the city website for more information. We want to thank Edgewater Resources, Eric Schultz, for your work on this project engineer. Rosemary Aldridge, the project manager, project manager, <laughs> senior vice president of Neil Schaefer, located right here in Sanford. Thank you so much for being on the City of Sanford podcast. Sanford says um, we love our marina and mm -hmm. we want to see it, you know, improve and, and be there for years to come, for generations to come to enjoy it. This is Lisa Holder, Chief Communications and Cultural Affairs Administrator for the City of Sanford. You're listening to Sanford Says. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on the city website. Check us out at SanfordFL.gov and social media as well. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.